Linda Davis is a touring artist, a Grammy Award winner, and BFFs with Reba. But the title that she's most proud of is Mom. Linda is mama to two girls, Lady Ace, Hillary Scott, and Riley Jean. She came over to the house for the sweetest conversation, and I'm so proud to share this episode with the beautiful Linda Davis. So I think this has to be the first time I've had a Grammy Award winner on my couch, so I feel oh. quite honored. <laughs> Thank I'm, you. Ho- I'm excited to be here. I'm hoping you'll leave a little bit of that mojo behind, maybe, you know. I think your son's got a, good, a lot of mojo going on without anything I could leave. But. <laughs> You're so sweet. So, Mom to Hillary and Riley Jean, mm-hmm. and I know that those are the loves of your life, and now three adorable granddaughters. Mm-hmm. We were just talking, you are surrounded by the females. The girls run the show at our place, yeah. Poor Lang, right? Poor Lang and poor Chris, my son-in-law, he's got... <gasps> His hands full, but their dog is a, is a boy, so I guess you there know, you go. That counts. I even have a boy dog, so I know I'm I'm on the opposite side of you. But well, it's coming. The girls are going to fill this place with so. joy and lipstick and jewelry, pink and sparkly things. Right? <laughs> Probably. I'll love every minute of it. That's for sure. So I want to start with a little bit about your story. Did you grow up in a musical household the way that Hillary did, or was this a, a whole new thing for your family? Well, she, I didn't grow up in a musical household. Now, my, I'm the baby of three kids. My sister, the oldest, she played by ear, and we got a piano for Christmas. Santa Claus brought one, and I, I'm nine years younger than her. Okay. So she got first, you know, turn, and so she would pick out songs, and I remember I, she'd finally get up, and then I'd sit down, and I'd pick out the same songs, little gospel songs that we learned at church. So that's how... I just noticed, you know, I loved it. And, and of course, my ear, I guess, kind of kicked in early on. And then at our little church, if you had the, the guts, you could sing and out sing each other. You That's know, the all kids. it took. <laughs> and so that, yeah, that was definitely how it started. But mom and daddy, they supported and encouraged it. But it was, there was nothing formal or trained about any right. of our music. You grew up mine. in Texas before coming to Nashville, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. How old were you when you moved to Nashville 19. to try to go for it? Wow. 19. I was just a, a young 19 at that. Yeah. I was so green and and innocent, just trusted everybody. And yeah. I mostly still do. But, you know, I, I think I had no fear. Mm-hmm. And that's when you need to come and make your, your move. Because with fear, you just kind of question things. And without it, of course, this day and time, you need to have a little, you know, yeah. But you didn't know what you didn't know. Correct. And so at that time, it actually might have helped you. Absolutely. And my folks didn't know anything either, really, to to share with me, not about the profession. So when they dropped me off with my the U-Haul and my Delta 88 and they headed back to Texas, it was, I didn't, you know, it didn't worry me, but I cannot imagine that ride back for my mama. Do you remember that like yesterday? Uh Uh-huh. That day that you were dropped off in Nashville Mm -hmm. and they turned around. Do y'all talk or did you talk? you know, afterward about what that was like for them? I mean, no, no, no. I didn't ask because I was loving it, Yeah, you know, and they kept it to themselves if they, you know, had conversations about worrying about me. I would check in, but it's, it's just so different. There wasn't cell phones and, yeah. And I'd call home collect, you know, you've heard about that. I'm sure you're too young to even no, have done no, that. No, I know all about the collect calls. <laughs> but goodness, it was just a different, different time. When you came to Nashville, your first kind of, was it a job working for a studio? Is mm-hmm. that right? Okay. Mm-hmm. That was, I, and all I knew how to do was answer the phone. There wasn't a whole lot of other things they needed me to do. If they did, they knew I probably couldn't do it. So just answer the phone, Linda, and you know, greet people when they come in. So yeah, that was the old Marty Robbins studio. It was just a lot of activity. A lot of people came in and out, a lot of sessions. And, and it was just the neatest place that I felt like I was just in the middle of it all. Oh yeah. Because Music Row is still very neat, but it was even more special, I think, back then. Well, and it was small, it was a smaller community than it is now. Mm -hmm. It's every, everything's so big and there's so many different branches of it and all of that. But it sounds like you were kind of there in the heyday of what, you know, the charm of Music Row was. I didn't even know how great it was. You know, when you're in the middle of what's going on, you just think, well, this is just, this is great. And I guess it's always been this way going to be, but Mm -hmm. I I just felt so wide-eyed and, um, blessed. I've always just loved 
what I've gotten to do and what I've, you know, the opportunities that have come to me. Yeah. And the friends that I've made, the people have been so good. And, and there's, I, there's really not a whole lot of negative stories that are a part of my journey. That's a, that's a rare thing to say, to be able to say, know. you know, this many years. Yeah I, yeah, I love that. So you started singing demos at some point, mm-hmm. and that voice got noticed for sure. That's how it worked for me. A lot of people had the same kind of path with doing demos in, in the graduating class, you can call it, that I was a part of. There were Joe Diffie and Garth and Trisha and it was a pretty cool little wow. group that we got to bum around with. Yeah. And then to have the opportunities to tour with, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but of course Reba is the one that we most know about. Uh-huh. And then um, George Strait and Kenny Rogers. Oh, gosh, yes. Tell me a fun story from those days of, of touring and best life or your, your naive self who would come to Nashville. Oh, my goodness. Well, <laughs> it was a few years after I'd been here and kind of done my, I guess you could we're all still paying our dues, but, you know, I, I had mm-hmm. been a, um, I'd worked in a piano bar playing and singing just to pay the bills and met a lot of people there, made some friends. Uh, but then when I got a record deal, that was pretty, uh, you know, I thought, okay, this is, this is what I came for. Yeah, this is it. That was the, I'm the goal. I'm going to that opera any time, any minute. They're going to come get me and put me on that stage. <laughs> Um, but the record deal was, you know, finding songs, and I wasn't writing, you know, all of my music or anything then. So the song selection process, having done demos, I knew a lot of writers, so I felt, you know, I was getting good songs. Um, and it all just has to, the timing of things, and, and you never know. The record deal, it just seemed like, okay, this is what this is gonna do it yeah. and you get in the studio and everybody's excited about all the songs and then you make a decision and release something to radio and and it and I'm thinking they're still doing this the radio tour yep did Connor make the- yes this past year yeah about a year oh. ago this time I guess he was I mean you gone. talk about gone and just that radio tour is rough the schedule of that and the you know on a plane every day to a new place and sometimes when you land on the plane you're in the car for two hours to get to the little station somewhere you know all of those things so I, they I still sure do, do it <laughs> I was thinking they come up with a new way to do that but I guess mm-hmm. that one's tried yeah. and true Loretta Lynn did it so oh, I always think her, about that scene in Coal Miner's Daughter yes. of her walking into the radio station and going around. And I mean, that's that's funny when you think about that because it's still what it is today, I for sure. There's no, yeah. I guess nobody's come up with a new way. I think one of the things that tells us, though, about this business is that it's still about relationships. Absolutely. It's about face-to-face and At, not numbers on an, an app on your phone, but relationships still matter. And it's not about numbers of where you are on a chart. It's not numbers necessarily about how many records you sold or it is about relationships. And I hope if there's anything that the young uh, artists like Connor can take from somebody uh, that's been at it a long time is not just the relationships with your fellow artists, which that's beautiful and special, but the relationships with the musicians, Mm. the, the engineers, the the other songwriters, of course, yeah. and producers, because you everybody kind of moves around, and you may not stay where you are. Yeah. The management or the label, yeah. you hope to, because you wanna you wanna have a longevity thing for everybody that's on your team. But you know, folks come and go at different parts of the industry, and for sure. you just want to look around at one of the neatest things on one of the award shows that I had a chance to to be, you know, to perform and. And I was waiting in the wings. Well, it was the CMA where uh, Reba and I got out there and we did Does He Love You for the first time. And um, I was waiting in the wings for my turn because her verse is first, you know, so she walks out. And then I'm waiting my turn. And I look around and there's Cheryl Riddle. She used to do Hillary's hair, my hair. She does Dolly's stuff. You know, it's like my friend. And she was like right there. And, you know, when, when you're nervous, you want to hold somebody's hand or just see somebody that's familiar and there she was smiling and go get them the I mean, cheerleader there for you and mm-hmm. we're you know we're friends to this day and that was a long time ago but we'd known each other 
for 10 years before that. Yeah. So yeah. that performance is still one of, to me, just the best CMA performances oh, ever. My gosh. It was just, the, it felt so dramatic. And I mean, Oh my goodness. I just love that. Mm. For those who aren't as familiar that are listening, and um, that oh, is gosh. the song. I mean, how could you not be? But the song that you and Reba, Does He Love You, won a Grammy for. Well, dig it up on the YouTube because there's some hair going on. <laughs> there's some the clothes, the some hair. eyes, and some, you know, looks. <laughs> it's just fun. So is it true that when you went to... Um, take part in does he love you with reba you thought you were just doing the demo Mm -hmm. and they were actually bringing someone else in Mm -hmm. that's such a good story i want to hear it (laughs) oh my okay so the song um does he love you had been around about 10 years before reba got her hands on it really Mm -hmm. who else had cut it anybody that Uh, we would know of uh i'll have to get back to you on that okay but it had not found its its home uh billy uh, Stritch and Sandy Knox wrote the song, and it was very, you know, powerful. It has such a uh, dramatic kind of a deal, but I guess it just not everybody either felt it or the if they tried to make it a duet, it just didn't click. So anyway, Reba found it, and we were on tour together. You know, we're Lang and I were both in her band. And a lot of the demos that I had done through the years, she would hear them. Several of them she cut. So a lot of the song the songwriters would ask me to sing on their demo, knowing that they were going to pitch it to her, thinking that might get better chance of Reba of, of her cutting it. Uh-huh. So I had not demoed that one though. So I don't I don't even know who was on the the original demo that she heard. But when she thought it to be uh, a good song for her and me at the time, I didn't know she was thinking that, but she wanted two songs for her greatest hits. And that was the one she went in the studio. This was a rare thing uh, for those two songs. She brought her, her uh, road band into the studio. For those that are listening or watching, you may not realize that most records are made with studio musicians people whose full-time job it is just to play these sessions and that's all they do they're not the road they're not the band you see at a concert with reba two different groups yes all talented but it's not the same studio musicians are under a microscope it every note needs to be perfect because Mm -hmm. it's it's hard to hide that yeah now, on the road, it, you're caught up in the moment, and if you miss something, it's gone. You're <laughs> on to the next, you know. So two different groups of people. Well, she had a really good band on the road who were very qualified to be studio musicians, but they still loved that road excitement, you know, mm-hmm. and on stage. Lang was one of them, by the way. So he's actually playing the track of our song, Does He Love You? Oh, Wow. So we and so she needed somebody to sing back and forth with, and you know, I I learned it and, and did it with her, and it was fun. It was really, you know, going at it. Yeah. And Tony Brown was her producer at the time, and and on her label MCA, it was called at the time, Trish Yearwood and Winona, they were two of you know several amazing female artists oh, yeah. that were on that label, which makes, when you're on the same label, it makes collaborations a little bit easier. Made much easier. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, I'd be happy to do my little part in case those gals need to learn it. But it was it was kind of neat what came out with Reba and I in the studio, and Tony must have thought so, and everybody else in the label. And, and Norval at the time... Uh, was my manager as well as oh, hers. Okay. So there was a lot of now. If this works, this could be something. Yeah. And so and that's I bet there was some. How are we going to top this? Like, what version is going to be better than what just happened? Maybe so. Yeah. And so that was how it all started, and we took it on stage, and oh my goodness, the crowd! It was it was pretty. Uh, Hard to deny that there was some kind of something that the crowd just ate up. Yeah. And it and it was the combination, I think, of the song and the lyrics and that back and forth. Mm. 
how we played it off as far as just I do. I think that, like you said, the song was great. The vocals were great. But you two, I mean, y'all were, y'all were those women. (laughs) We just went into that after that same man. I mean, y'all were them. That awful man. (laughs) (laughs) That cheater. Yeah. It was just fun. And I, I just think that, and we love each other. We're, we're friends, really good friends. And, uh, to just kind of turn that that own was just fun every night. I'm surprised you didn't get acting role offers after that. <laughs> we put it all out there, you know, with that one little three and a half minute song. And then, of course, some of the fun stuff that adds to the drama is Sandy Speaker created some of the gowns and some of the outfits that we wore as we, you know, toured through those yes. years. That just the glamorous and I mean, it was oh, just so all of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Was Lang a part of the band? That Reba lost? No, no. Mm-mm. That was, we where's came, the timing of that? We were actually, we were, I was managed by by her management company, she and Narvel, mm-hmm. and we were opening for her, and Restless Heart was a middle act, and we were in um, Saginaw, Michigan, with my band playing for me, and we had a night off because they went and flew to a private show in San Diego, and then we were going to do Evansville and Fort Wayne and then get on back home. So our little band and bus stayed in Saginaw for another night. We were going to drive to Fort Wayne, and uh, so when we got the call that to go home. Not the plane crash that happened. Mm. Yeah, dark, dark, dark times. When's the last time you performed that with Reba? You know what? She did a record um, and it was like a release for her record at the Ryman. It's been a few pre-COVID, so okay. Uh, you know those years kind of just blur. So yeah. I, I don't even know how many. But she yeah. did it. Uh, she did a deal a couple nights, and she asked me to come and and kind of surprise. She I was going to say, were you in the wings in the same s- situation, and then came out and surprised the audience? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, because they didn't know that I was going to be there. But she had a lot of friends on that night, and yeah. so I was. It was a fun night. And yeah. at the Ryman, I mean, what's not fun about the Ryman? What's not fun about Reba? So exactly. It's pretty special. I love but it. But Connor, okay, so his <gasps> has he performed on the Ryman stage he, well, a as funny, well? A funny story there, the actual Ryman stage, he has, but not as the songwriter artist that he is now at 22. But when he was 14, I know you know Lana and Neil Thrasher, surely. Oh, yes. Yes, it okay. Is. So the Thrashers are dear friends of ours, mm-hmm. and Neil was doing a round at the Ryman for a charity benefit. Mm-hmm. And friends all went to support. and I mean, Connor went to anything he could possibly go to growing up either with me or, you know, our family friends, for example. And Neil brought him out on stage oh. and he sang the sweetest song he had written. Um, I'm trying to remember the exact, I think we just called it Angels, but it was not all angels have wings. And it was about his mama, which of course was precious. I've got a video of that somewhere. But um, that's the only time that he's actually performed on the Ryman. Now he did get to make his Grand Ole Opry debut this year. which I was it you on, did. The, on the YouTube. I oh, sure you did. did. Yes. Oh my goodness. That was probably the most special night as you. I got choked up. Oh, that's so sweet. It yeah, was... it's a beautiful, beautiful song he had written when he was 14 and um, performed at the Opry, and that was just a really special night for our family. Mm, I know it is. As I know, you know. Do you yes. remember your first time on the Opry? Yes. Yes. Was that Thanks, back? Snow introduced me. Oh, wow. Yes. You know, Jeannie Seeley introduced Connor. Oh, I don't know if that part's on goodness. YouTube. but And it was the most precious introduction. Oh, she's a she's one in a million. Yeah. Yeah, she is. And one of the things I love about Connor is that he appreciates and knows and has really studied the history of country mm-hmm. music growing up. And so he knew what that night meant. And to even have Jeannie, you know, introduce him was just really, really special. Well, I think that's amazing and so right that he has that background that the he's history mm-hmm. been a student of yes and those that are still doing it like Jeannie yeah recognize the ones who pay attention and and respect that mm-hmm. and that makes Connor more endearing to all of these and right. that's it's just so beautiful when you know you just work and you you earn your 
your turn. Yes, yes. And those that are ahead of us, they appreciate that and they root mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. And they want to see you succeed. And it, yeah, and, and that I, means so much. A, it's a family. Yeah. It oh, really, it really, is really is. Yeah. And that's how, because that's one of the things that I learned when I uh, started, you know, having some pretty neat things happen is that you hear about, oh, it's a competition. Oh, this is a tough business. People yeah. are so, you know, cutthroat. And I, I really, I didn't see it that way. That wasn't your experience. No. And I know that there has to be, you know, when it comes to trying to get the uh, the records played on radio, there's yeah. only so many slots yeah. <laughs> and all that stuff. So there do, there has to be some some uh, manipulating things and trying to get your kid to mm-hmm. win, but not the artist there yeah. or the musicians or the songwriters. Mm-hmm. Everybody, it's like, we're proud for you. Yeah, that's, that's one of the so, things. As I, long as you're humble. Yes, yes. And I noticed that even today because you talked about, you used the term, the class that you were mm-hmm. in, which is kind of a music road term, but people will talk about. But I heard someone ask Connor recently, who do you kind of look at as in your class? And it's these incredibly talented young, you know, artists that he's kind of, you know, oh, Coming did you get to play it. here? Oh, I get to play, you know, all those <sighs> things. But the way they root for each other yes. and cheer each other on mm-hmm. and, you know, Connor's about to do this kind of they call it a headlining tour but college tour or whatever and to choose his headliners and get to you know tap his friends on the shoulder and say I want you to succeed with me come mm-hmm. with me mm-hmm. like that is really um a unique thing about this industry I I don't know what other genres do I agree but this is it's really I I just think the camaraderie and the relationships you mentioned yes a second ago that is how they're built and sustain and you know some fall away And that's okay. That's just life. Right. But the ones that stick and the ones that you have in common and you, you know, there's going to be weddings and there's going to be new babies born. And that's what you go through together. Mm Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just beautiful. You, you end up doing life together, really. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect yeah. way to say it. So um, what stage in your music career were you when you had Hillary? Oh, pretty early because, um, so I got here. In 82. And I met my husband, Lang. and Who's all, Who was also in the music business yes, at the time. Yes, that's why he came to Nashville from South Carolina. And we uh, started dating and we married in 84. And she came along in 86. So we did not wait very long. Just a couple years. Wasn't yeah. all planned out. Nothing's been really planned out. <laughs> God just plans it out. That's right. We and can we try just, to plan. We but. just ride, ride it out best we can. So um, she, and at that time, I was playing at the piano bar, I mentioned. And uh, and nothing really had happened yet other than demos. I was, I was going downtown. Sometimes uh, during the day, I would do the demos. I would come home and kind of, and my neighbor would watch her for me while Lang worked out at the Nashville Network, a real job and production. And so my neighbor would watch her, and then I would, uh, you know, come home and I'd change clothes and, and you know, see, give her a snack or whatever she needed until another friend would come, but if Lang wasn't home yet, and hang on to her while I went to work, and then Lang would get there, and, <laughs> and then he would take over from the, the babysitter or whatever. So we it was kind of... It was hard. Yeah, and sometimes she was on your hip in the studio, right? Oh, my gosh. Did you know that? Have you read that somewhere? <laughs> I read that somewhere. It is true. She was, she was a studio baby. If if Sassy couldn't watch her, she, I'd just take her with. And all of the, the uh, songwriters knew her, and everybody in the studios uh, were cool with that because she was a good girl. Yeah. She was quiet, except one time. <laughs> I don't know if you heard this story. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so I we got our, our demos ahead of time on cassette. So I had it in the, the vehicle, learning it, you know, riding around here and there. And so she'd heard this song. She was in the car seat, you know. So on the way to do the demo, I was playing it, getting familiar. And uh, so I get there. And she goes in there with me, and she actually stays in the vocal booth with me because there was a lot of guys that she didn't know. So she was more comfortable with me, and I knew she'd be quiet. So I was in there, and there's this one part of this one song that was just eating my lunch. I could not, like, whatever lyric or, or 
little musical interview interval thing that was going on. I was just not catching it uh-huh. easily. So we kept having to redo it, redo it. So she was actually sitting on a chair and it got to that part and she started singing it with me correctly. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and of course we had to stop tape and Mark Sanders said, well, um, I didn't really call for a duet for this song but that was really pretty um, can we do it again with just you linda he's like linda can you do it like like hillary like, did yeah, do it like your daughter so anyway she had some experience in the studio just you know i guess she just learned by being around it but yeah that wasn't really something that she seemed to want to do as a, a young child she could she was always a good singer mm-hmm. um could carry her part and Lang and I would do part harmonies around her but had you hoped that she would like oh, as no. a little girl did you want oh, her no. oh no <laughs> it's too painful it's hard when you're rejected you know when things don't happen so we didn't want to see her you know get all yeah bruised the, and the and disappointment battered. of it yeah there's so many you know valleys and, and there's highs of course but it's tough yeah it is and and when it's like close calls and it's like oh you know, that hurts. But she could sing. Uh, but when Lang and I started touring and being on the road and gone, my, his mom and daddy looked after her. Mm-hmm. So she really didn't like the idea of this industry anyway. Traveling and being on the road. From her. Oh, wow. So there was a little turnoff about that. But she loved to sing. And, and in her school, she would be a part of a little praise band and everything. And so she was using her talent, but... She, it's not something you saw her pursuing, though. Mm-mm, not until she was 16. Okay. What, and, what changed at 16? Okay, so Riley Jean comes along when Hillary's 14. 14. I was going to ask you how many years difference. Okay, 14. Two only children, basically. Oh, wow, yeah. I told you God had a sense of humor. That, yeah, God definitely. We can make all the plans we want, but it's Surprise. his timing, right? And it's always best. Yes. Riley comes along, and, and this is a different part of, of my career, and of Lang's career journey when Riley comes. So not only do we have two children so far apart, like only children, it's raising them differently Mm -hmm. because of where we are in our uh, careers and and life choices. At that point, we had been away from Reba. We toured with her seven, eight years, and then Lang starts a business, which keeps him home. So when Riley came along, she had daddy home all the time. By now, Hillary's in, uh, you know, early high school. She's 14. So Riley comes along, and by now I am um, working with Kenny Rogers most of the time. Okay, on the road? Yes. But his schedule wasn't anything to the degree that Reba's was when Lang and I worked with her. So it fit a little better for family. A lot better Mm -hmm. for family. Weekends. So anyway, so we got invited to do, it was, we called it the Linda Davis Family Christmas Show. Christmas, yeah, out at Opryland Hotel. For three years in a row, so Riley was two, three, and four. Hillary was uh, 16, 17, and 18. So that's when the idea that she might like this business yeah. kind of clicked. Because she was actually performing, probably in front of big crowds, uh-huh. and the, kind of seeing what that felt like, getting a little taste of it. And she was also getting a taste of, we got band members who were just like family we've got crew members we have people that we just hunker you know we get together in the green room before the show we we dress and we eat and we i mean that is so fun that's Again, off stage. But they become your family yeah. they are yeah and and the ones that we were uh, you know blessed to get to work with for those three years we'd already known for several years so they were our family and my mother-in-law would help rally ready and I mean it was it it was just a sweet sweet time it was a lot of work I don't know if you've heard about the schedule for those Christmas shows that they do I can't imagine like starts at Thanksgiving and goes the day after Christmas yeah it's a lot Riley thought Opryland Hotel was our ours (laughs) and that (laughs) big tree (laughs) that you see when you drive in is our Christmas I mean it was so cute (laughs) I guess she would come out on stage during the show too and steal the show but, yeah. <laughs> but what what Hillary saw and what she experienced was a production where there was um, 
a lot of detail, a lot of moving parts, and that we could, you know, our budget would allow. Right. And it, she fit right in. She had a place, and she had a, she had songs, and she had wardrobe, and it was just so fun. It was boom, 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 and she just. She danced with Santa. I mean, it was just interaction with the kids. That So there were a lot of elements for, of that little show that we did. Did you feel it coming? You're like, okay, she's she's really good at this. Oh, and yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So then I, did you feel more comfortable with the decision to pursue? No. No? Not a bit? Not a bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But when she started really uh, writing, and, and one of the, the major uh, changes was Victoria Shaw came to it and brought her, her family to our show. Mm. And she, we saw her afterwards, you know, and spent a little time backstage. And she, she told Lang and I, she said, she really has something special. Do y'all realize that? And thank you. Vic. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Well, can I, you know, start taking her around and, and having her write? with me and some of my friends and you know who some of her friends are it's the best of the best yes so we knew that that was going to be situations that would be safe and very uh enlightening and you trusted victoria absolutely Mm -hmm. and so she started working with her and and um hillary was still in high school so it wasn't that far for her to to drive downtown to the row or whatever Mm -hmm. after school well then that continued, and she went to MTSU, and we still had her little show when she was driving back and forth from Murfreesboro, and and all of that was starting to just heat up because it was working out real good, you know. Yeah. She was growing and just getting better, and so we didn't really do anything. We, It was kind of like it was out of your hands at that point, and you just knew she was surrounded by good yes. people that would help develop this talent that, yes. that was probably naturally in her just from mom and dad and the good Lord. It was just fun to watch. Yeah. And then it became like, I think she's going to do this. <laughs> then she was at college, and she just, she, you know, I think I'm going to quit and drop out. Okay. How'd that go over? Well, what could Lang say? Because he did the same thing. Yeah. I didn't go. To, I went one year and came up here. So you didn't have much I to say? say either. We couldn't be hypocrites. <laughs> we just kept suggesting. Well, if you just maybe the nursing program, it's quick. You can get in, get your degree or whatever you need is that to go to work. Is that the type of work you could have seen her doing since no. you weren't looking at? <laughs> no, <laughs> you were just looking for what alternatives. We wanted her to do because she would have something else when if music didn't go well. But I guess it went okay. (laughs) Yeah, I think it worked out. Okay. So she starts writing with Victoria. She's um, probably playing writer's nights maybe and doing some of that type of thing. And then when did you first start hearing about these two gentlemen named Dave and Charles? Oh, fun. Uh, Okay. So she had a... Vic helped her get a a, a little uh, showcase with... RCA at the time. I, I don't think they call it that now. But uh, and Joe Galante had, you know, a little budget, and he set up a showcase for her and by herself. And that was, I don't know if you had one of these moments. Maybe not. It might have happened so fast for y'all. But mm-hmm. she had this showcase, and she did great. She had some of her own songs, and a lot of people came. I'm, And I thought it was a real good turn out and she did good and he didn't sign her mm-hmm. oh gosh I remember that sitting on her bed and she was just distraught it just hurt and, and I was disappointed too because I thought well she really did a good job but I guess there may be another female over there that's too close mm-hmm. to like what she's mm-hmm. doing and well this and goes right just, back to what you just said this is what you didn't want her to that's exactly to right. go through and experience and right there it was and so it was, but I, we told her, it's like, okay, this is not the end. If this, th- because God has the right place for you. Mm-hmm. He's got the right situation waiting for you. You just don't know it yet. We're not there yet. We will just get through this and see what he's got planned because yeah. it's going to be better. Absolutely. It's going to be better. So she, you know, dried her tears, and then I went in the other room, and then I cried some, and I didn't <laughs> let her see. Just You just don't want your kid disappointed. Yeah. But anyway, sure enough, she decides to um, 
get it was like a um, an audition at what well, at the time it was called Twelfth and Porter, a little club. Did, yep. You remember that one? Oh yeah. And so there was some kind of show that they were going to produce, and she was going to audition. So at this event, uh, I don't know how many people were there, but she saw across the room Charles. She recognized him because his brother, Josh. Yes. She followed him on what at the time was called MySpace. Oh, my goodness. Throwback. Yes. So I think I had a MySpace, too. So <laughs> I, so I was, <laughs> I was uh, aware of MySpace, but she was, you know, keeping up with all the, the talent. And, and Josh was somebody that she really liked his voice. And she had seen Charles on his brother's page so anyway she recognized him and I guess she walked over and she's just outgoing and like that and said I recognize you and I like your voice and I think he thought she might be hitting on him I don't know (laughs) I love it I don't know but anyway they just stuck up a conversation well but before they parted they exchanged numbers Mm -hmm. and and Charles said well I have a friend Dave we're living at Josh's house, and we're just here writing. I'm from Georgia. Yeah. And we're just writing our brains out. So would you like to write with us? Well, I think then she might have thought, well, he's hitting on me. Now. I don't know. <laughs> it was totally turned out to uh, only be about business and, and Writing, fun and uh-huh. platonic. So they, and so they hold up for hours and hours, days on end, and they wrote a bunch of songs. And then... Well, I don't know which one. So well, why don't we just go sing these somewhere instead of keeping them to ourselves right now? Yeah. So that's when their uh, third and Lindsley. Okay. Uh, and they had this little stage in the corner. It was like a, almost like a triangle. Uh, the stage was so tiny, and they had a couple, you know, some friends that played instruments, and and uh, Dennis, who plays bass, he was with them back then, and. It still is. So, I mean, so there were some friends that started with them that are still with them. And you were talking about your son who does a lot of the, uh, the, the video, the video content like and everything. Yeah, Cooper. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so uh, one of their, Dave and Charles's friends, Adam, from Georgia as well, started doing, following al- along behind them with the video Kind camera. of documenting everything. Yes. Okay. And I think that was some of the first of that, that was going on and Adam was doing that with Lady A and they started showing it and they called it Webisode Wednesdays. Uh, Do you remember those? I feel like, I mean, so long. I think that was kind of like in the beginning before everybody started doing that. That's what I'm talking about. They were just cutting edge. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, (laughs) and they would be in their little, uh, I think Charles had a Jeep or something that they talking about the radio tour, you know, they would get in his vehicle and maybe pulling a trailer behind with the, some gear. And all of them would get in there and just head down the road to Lord knows where. Lang and I didn't ask a lot of questions. We we just figured no news is good news. <laughs> How they're doing this. Yeah. You know, we'll just get a call if they need us. But we're just, we're home, you know. Cheering you on. on. Yeah. So they had a camera on them all the time with Adam. And they edited it and made, you know, little pieces that the fans started watching mm-hmm. and looking forward to every Wednesday. What did you think with your musical background of their sound? Like the first time you kind of heard this blend of oh, these three talents. How could you deny that that is really special? And whatever you want to call it, it's country-ish. But it's more <laughs> what would be pop back when we were kids. And it's as country as some of the country, you know, it, yeah. it just it was a blend of what the kids loved themselves. And then there was this more contemporary kind of thing that was cool. And yeah. I don't know, it, but the blend, the sound of their harmonies and how they, and Charles has this range that is just ungodly. It's just amazing. And he can do a lot of things. Hillary's warm tones just kind of keep it grounded dave has that third part covered that it his part is almost um you don't he he doesn't make his presence really big mm-hmm. but it's solid and necessary yeah oh, to yeah. make their yeah. sound and he's brilliant 
<laughs> oh, they all are. You know, they all have the things that they bring, and it's just, yeah. it just works. And then they have fun on stage. They're just, yeah. And that, there was it, no group like that. Not at the time. Exactly there like was that. just not, you mm-hmm. know, that these three friends and having and writing. Their yes, own songs. and writing their own songs. And the songs were different. The songs were they just you know they just were very it was very a, good. A quality. magical blend. All of that. And and it was just the Lord. So as an outsider looking in, it looks like they have done a really good job at this stage of figuring out this road life fame balance. And then they all have these beautiful families. Is that what we see is, is what it is? Well, they've been together 15 years. Yeah. And you, you got to live life. And to make it full, it, you have to have some of all of it you need balance and when they met their partners and and just fell in love the natural order of things and now they all have dave has two children um ward is uh cassie and charles is one little boy cute as a button and then hillary has three two at once Uh, (laughs) i want to hear about that too you were at the doctor's office when she found out she's having twins no twins in the family at all Neither side, no, nobody. Uh, tell me about that that appointment. <laughs> oh my goodness! I mean, it, it just felt like surely this is candy camera, and somebody's going to jump out of a box and say, "No, not really." But no, it was it was just a, a man. You just took me back to that moment. I hadn't been there in a while in my mind uh, <laughs> because they're so big now and and fun and grown almost Mm -hmm. but no it was really sweet to to have been there for that uh but it was (laughs) shocking (laughs) yes I forget if if I got quiet or if I got chatty or if she got quiet and and I I don't remember it was Was it just just, the two of you well Chris and Chris was there too okay okay oh my goodness but that was a nice thing to have invited me to be in there for oh, him yes, yes. having his mother-in-law in there and it, it was just it was beautiful yeah that's so sweet yeah it was and it came on the heels of a, a of a hard time so it was like a double portion of uh sweet favor mm-hmm. I love that Hillary's been very outspoken about dealing with mis- miscarriage and um I think it's something that there's such a stigma around and we don't talk about it, you know, a lot, but I know you're probably proud of her for the way that she's, you know, kind of empowered other women to know that, you know, Mm -hmm. yes, this happens and Mm -hmm. and we get through it. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. And in our case, having our faith and our, uh, you know, each, uh, each of us have a very strong faith and, and that's what we lean into Mm -hmm. and, God gets us through it and music and yeah. and some beautiful songs and uh, mm-hmm. things that'll that'll be around a long time yeah. came from some of that heartache some of that pain that the family mm-hmm. experienced I want to talk about that project for sure love remains and mm-hmm. I bet after all of the production and the hard work behind it and the the billboard awards and the Grammy and all that I bet it's just a really special treasure for you to have for your mm-hmm. family to have that album mm-hmm. and never did I see something like that in my wildest dream you know you have your goals and your dreams and if you get some of that awesome yeah then it's like okay then Hillary has her goals and her dreams and she's gotten a little uh, you know over and beyond amazement yes and you think well what are, what else is there when then there's that yeah. when we get to all be together kind all of blend of all the gifts that all of you had been given with and singing about Jesus I mean nothing better than nothing that nothing better and oh and that <laughs> is hope that we can leave for others um, in songs that just, that's what matters. Mm-hmm. Was that Project Hillary's idea? Actually, no. It was Lang's idea. Oh, wow. Uh, it. I don't want to drag this out, but my uh, father-in-law, Lang's daddy, mm-hmm. uh, had cancer, was diagnosed, and there were five months that we all went through that with him. And it was um, really hard. And that's at the same time rocket ship was taken off for Lady A. It was beautiful and it was awful all at the same time. (laughs) 
I'm sure you've probably experienced that oh, yeah. in your life. Oh yeah, the, at different times, mm-hmm. the, the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, and and everything in between. Absolutely. But our faith through it all was our foundation, and so when uh, Papa was diagnosed, it was just you know rocked our world, and he was a big presence in all of our lives, and especially my girls. Through those months, there was this website called Caring Bridge. Have you? Yes, yes. You I'm following that? a friend's journey on, on that site right now. People would leave scriptures. They would send references to songs and because they knew we were a musical family. So uh, my father-in-law wasn't that you know technical to be able to blog, but Lang and Cindy did for him. And then he, they would show him who was writing back. and He so could he, see the encouraging yes, messages. Yes. And, uh-huh. Oh, and looked forward to it. And as did my mother-in-law. Oh. It was very, uh, it was huge during those times. Mm-hmm. All of that, you know, Lang was just keeping close. And so in about a year and a half or so, he just thought, you know, we need to do something for those people. It's been time. He's kind of, his grief has settled a little. And what do we do? Well, we burn CDs and send them to you for Christmas or whatever, <laughs> you know. So he said, Hillary, can we go down in the studio in our home and like do five or six old hymns that mm. Papa would have liked and that these people know? And let's just send them to him. She, he, he said, would that work? Would what that a beautiful be okay? idea. It's just simple. Yeah. And she said, well, let me think on this. Let me pray on this. And I will, they were leaving town and got back. And she said, okay, I have thought about it, prayed about it. I want to do this where everybody can maybe have a chance to hear it. Mm. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to get my team, the label, the management, the publicity, I mean, the whole machine. And we are going to go in the studio, and we're going to make a full-out record. And they're behind it. Dave and Charles are blessing this. And everybody, I think the guys were doing some projects. Yeah, everybody kind of had a too. solo project going on at the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, and, and it fell at a good time. Ricky Skaggs, our friend, agreed to produce it. And so that's when it all just kind of took a life of its own and Hillary um we found some sweet hymns that we all loved Lang and I wrote Hillary wrote um other friends gave us songs to consider and the miscarriage happened during the making of that project there was one oh it was so weird I I knew we were lacking a emotion of a song on the project I didn't really know how to describe it we were riding uh together and you know she was pregnant and we were all you know just doing our thing she was touring and um I was touring with Kenny Rogers and so we finally had a day we were home we were riding and it was uh, I was trying to explain it's like Hillary we're just missing some something it's got to be some and at that time we were riding it was a storm remember I remember right now we were coming around the at 100 Oaks we're coming around which is kind of spooky because you're and it's raining and I said it it needs to kind of feel like this because we don't have one on our record that feels like this oh wow and I didn't think any more about it so then several weeks later um, Lang and I and uh, two friends were on my our back deck writing a song called We March On and that is I don't know if you heard that one yet but I think it's very positive and it just kind of keep on going even when it's hard And it wasn't the storm song <laughs> no it wasn't mm-hmm. um, and so we we're out on there, and I, my phone rang. It was Hillary, and I knew she and Chris were going to the doctor that day. And I went out on the front porch, and she told me that they had lost the baby. Mm. And so, okay, so, um, well, this is, there's, God has a plan. 
there is a plan and I don't like it and you don't like it and I don't like this but there's he's got something planned out and that's where thy will comes from is that probably been therapeutic for both of you though to write out when you've been through absolutely those times those are I think that's just a, a gift that the Lord has given us your son has that mm -hmm. and so many of our mutual friends and I bet you write if you do things like this I'm sure you're a writer <laughs> as well you may even sing we hadn't even got around to I that definitely yet. do not sing I definitely have a little bit of a creative gene but I don't have any vocal talent <laughs> but when you can express in a healthy um, form uh, your heart and your emotions and I think everybody probably has that. Maybe they don't realize it. Mm -hmm. But to do it in a way then, if you're bold enough to let other people in to read it or hear it, um, then it helps them. It's it's a beautiful thing that God entrusts us. Yeah, that's with. the gift of music. It is. Yeah. Just, I mean, I just feel like I have to say, if somebody's listening to the podcast and they're going through something or they know someone who is, that song is just therapeutic. It's healing. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's God sent. Mm -hmm. And that whole project, Love Remains, is, um, it's just really special. And I just thought that was a really neat thing, not only for Hillary to do, to kind of take a stand in her faith of this is, this is who I am, mm -hmm. but then to involve the whole family mm -hmm. and Riley Jean's on it and, yes. you know, all of you. Yes. And, and to the time we spent together, oh my goodness. And my mother-in-law, um, she came in and out of the studio with us. My sister-in-law was there. So knowing what uh, inspired it, yeah. that was healing for them, too, to be a part of the musical uh, production mm -hmm. and to see the... You know, and, and the way Ricky described it, he was kind of the not just the producer, but the pastor of the project. It just uh, was... Yeah. Even even down to the, the musicians who were a part of every song, it it's like handpicked by God. It was really, I, I can't imagine anything ever being that, like, quite like that. Right. What is it like for you to um, see Hillary as a mom? Oh, pretty much that's, there's nothing sweeter. And she's a good mama. Mm. I will brag. She's a good mama. She has patience. She, and, and one of them in particular wears that patience out. <laughs> I think it's so funny. We've all got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute to see them with their little uh, looks and stuff. But the it, personalities it, as mm -hmm. they evolve. How old are the grandbabies now? So Isley K is nine, going to be ten in July. Oh my goodness! And the twins have a birthday the end of January. Okay, so they are about... Five, going to be five. They're about to be five. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> so fun, and you're loving every every minute of being a grandma. About, what's your grandma name? Oh, and uh, Lolly. Uh-uh. And how did that come to be? Everybody asked me that. It's just so crazy. So she was pregnant with the twin. Well, no, with Isley. And uh, folks would ask, what are you going to be called? And I never cared. I call called mine Mamma and uh, Daisy, which was because I couldn't pronounce Mama Davis, so I just called mine Daisy. But Cute. so anything, you know, whatever she wants to call me. Yeah. So I had a dream, just random, and I don't always remember my dreams. And this one I did, and the part that I remembered was my grandchild called me Lolly. So I woke, you know, couldn't wait to, to mention that, just in case that could work. And... Then Lang said, well, I want to be called G-Paul. Cute. So Lolly and G-Paul, or oh, G. Oh, my goodness. Um, I and love that. You had a dream about your grandma name. And yes. And that's you. I'm, and that, it stuck. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really cute. I love that. <laughs> You're so welcome I know to use it when you have your turn. There you go. I mean, I've, I've, we were talking about that the other day, trying to think. I don't have grandbabies, but thinking about those grandma names. Oh, no, names, you don't so. have any yet. But you just <laughs> wait. You think 
life is fun now. And by the way, I'm on I'm on Lolly Detail right now, so I'm I have to get the kids at two fifteen. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, Lolly Detail <laughs> takes precedence over anything. That's for sure. So give us a little update on Riley Jean. And oh, she's um, doing the college thing yes. and all of that. Well, she. Um, everybody asked. Well, does she sing? And and she's all over the Love Remains record. Yes. Uh, and she does sing and can and has a great voice. And I love her personality when she's on stage because she's a witty young lady. <laughs> but Riley does not have the the fire and the desire to do this. Mm-hmm. And uh, which course, could be a really good thing. Oh, I we mean, would to never watch them. insist on. The, you know how I told you about we didn't want Hillary to have her heart broken, so we're not going to. But when she got out of high school, she did not want to go to college. Like one more math class, one more English paper to write. This wasn't her deal. So we, okay, so she worked, and then COVID hit, and we, you know, the kids weren't going to college. They were doing it online, and so Lang and I thought, well, of all times for her not to be in college, this is the best time for her not to be in college. True, <laughs> so true. Yeah, she it was not be, a normal experience no, for those kids. No, yeah. and all of a sudden she just had this awakening, and this, the Lord told her uh, to be a social counselor, like a guidance counselor at oh, school. Wow, uh, a sc- that's one place yeah. you can do that. Yeah. And, and talk what, about essential. My goodness, oh yes, that is oh great work. So she just realized. He felt she felt that he led her to that, and you got to go to college for that. Uh-huh. Got to have a degree to get that kind of job. So she put in all the, you know, application at MTSU. So she's there. She's living in an apartment with her friends, and just I, I've never seen her as happy. And it it gets hard. Any college student, a mom of a college student, you know that when it's crunch time, those can be you know hard and yeah. stressful. But she. She just buckles down and does it, and she's still working. And yeah, it's she's living the life right That's now. Awesome. Yeah, it's a good life. It is That's for sure. It's been a great life, and uh, it's you know how blessed if you and everybody's healthy, everybody is saved. Mm. Yeah, they can get much better than that. Okay, I have to know what would you say Hillary got from her mama? I think she got. A, a big heart that loves people and is interested in people and wants to make sure everybody's comfortable and happy. Mm, that's a really good thing to get to. Well, yeah, I think her daddy wants that for people, so she probably got some of that from him too. From both of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think she definitely got her talent her beauty and the fact that she's as beautiful inside as outside, just like I knew you would be. So I'm just so um, thankful to have gotten to spend time with you today. Linda was just as sweet and beautiful in person as I had imagined her to be. And I love the opportunity to talk about our kids together. Don't forget you can watch these episodes on YouTube. Go subscribe to Got It From My Mama. Follow us on social media and leave a review of the podcast if you're enjoying it. We so appreciate you.